Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to my introduction to Duelist, the card game that I've been playing uh, for the past couple days on the stream. I love this game so much. There's so much innovation. It's super refreshing and it's definitely something that I think a lot of you other Yu-Gi-Oh players, because that's pretty much uh, most of my viewers, uh, you guys are going to have a great transition to this if you understand some concepts of any type of card game. Think of it like chess plus Hearthstone uh, plus... Duelist of the Roses from the older Yu-Gi-Oh game for the PS2. Uh, it's just got so much amazing stuff in this that you guys are going to enjoy it. But I do want to mention first off, this is a sponsored video. And before you guys go, oh, it's just a sponsored video. Right, I'm out. Okay, this game, it's so good. Like, I'm going to continue uploading stuff uh, on this channel f with uh, more gameplay from Duelist. Because this game is so awesome. And like I said, I've been sh streaming this game and I've been playing this game and having a blast. This game is really unique too. It's really awesome. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a quick duel and then we'll talk a little bit more about the game and I'll show you guys my decks. And like there's basically like an Exodia in the deck. It's just so innovative. Let's go ahead and first off watch uh, a duel real quick. Um, let's go ahead and go to the Diamond MMR because it's going to kind of give you guys a better understanding uh, of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's go ahead and watch... Um, uh, should we go? I'm looking for like Abyssian. Uh, Alright, we can go Songhai versus Abyssian. Uh, that would be interesting. Because um, these are like kind of two completely different play styles. So here's what the game looks like. And this is obviously a replay. So in the very beginning of the duel, you actually get to. You start out with a certain amount of cards, and then you can go ahead and rotate uh, two of the cards. Uh, and you're gonna have six is the max amount of cards you can have in your hand similar to Yu-Gi-Oh um, And you start out with five, but you can rotate two of them out uh, You don't have to go minus one like a mulligan uh, or a recycle is what the, some of them call it in some games You go minus one, but you don't so this is the battlefield and these are the cards in your hand Now we're watching this from the perspective of the Songhai um, There are different ways to play certain archetypes or decks or classes uh, Whatever you want to call it but uh, generally, um, the Songhai is all about, uh, well, th there's different ways to play it, different uh, builds also. But generally, Songhai relies off of backstabs. Uh, that's where they can really excel. They can also technically burn your opponent and they'll be on like a timer. But um, for the most part, they want to be very, very aggressive. Um, especially when you're using something like backstab, which means you're attacking your opponent from behind. Now, the Abyssians. They are all about summoning a bunch of monsters. Sometimes you destroy your own monsters to summon maybe even a more powerful monster or gain some type of advantage. Or some monsters have what's called Death Watch. And Death Watch is something where if anything dies, they see something die, they will have an effect. So um, there's also this other thing called a Jaxi and it has what's called uh, a Death Wish. So what that means is when the monster dies, some effect will happen. So there's no like banish zone from this. Uh, there's just like, it, it's just gone. It's either there or it's gone. You can bring stuff back from the graveyard technically or the, the destroyed zone if you want to call it that. If like I said, a lot of you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh! So you'll be like at home with a lot of these different cards. So, um, so there's, there's things that are equips uh, that you equip to your general. So the goal of it is to reduce your opponent to zero life points. You can see over here, this guy's got 17, and this uh, person over here's got 25. So, when the general dies, you lose. But the thing is, you can attack with the general. The general is not completely defenseless like in chess. The general can actually be your win condition. Um, if you're playing Lionar, you can actually be very aggressive. You can put a bunch of equips on your, like, uh, like a Noble Knight deck, and you can just go bash people with your general, and you can, like, mitigate damage. There's a lot of just amazing effects. So, each... Uh, race, class, uh, faction, whatever you guys want to call it, uh, they have multiple different like generals in that section, and they all have a special ability over here. Now, this guy over here, uh, the Kalios, uh, his special ability is that he can blink enemy uh, uh, friendly units. Um, you technically, you can also blink other things, but that's uh, like with other like uh, spell cards. Um, the Abyssian over here, uh, her uh, ability, the Lilith. Lilith's ability is that she can summon two Wraithlings nearby your general. So from that, they're just 1-1s, one, one, so um, they're not going to really do too much. But again, you're using them to sacrifice, or for example, this over here is called uh, Black Souls. And Black Souls' ability is that when you summon Wraithlings, it gains 2-2. Two, two. So it's going to gain 2 attack and 2 defense. So 
how it works in this game, uh, if this 2-2 attacks this 1-1, one, one, this 1-1 one, one will die, but it'll still deal damage to this um, uh, monster's defense. So it'll become a 1-2 because it did take damage. And then this one will, of course, die. Uh, let's see if he goes ahead and he goes ahead and attacks it like I mentioned before. It's going to go to a 2-2. Two, two. Certain things can increase. You can also negate things effects. So it, like I said, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh, you will feel at home with a lot of different mechanics in this uh, game. But I'll show you guys some like some of the interesting decks and you can see the spell over here. So uh, his spell is that he transforms uh, this unit over here into a panda and it cannot be attacked. So basically um, he's turning like a really good monster into basically nothing. Um, however, this card cannot be attacked, so you can use it to kind of wall off. Um, that can be a technically a strategy. There is a lot of different strategies. There's ones where you ch change the terrain into spikes, and if they step on the spikes, then they will take damage. So you can think of it kind of like a trap in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, so to speak. But there's no trap cards where you place them and they don't see them. Um, it's just going to be something that uh, appears on the field. So um, it's really awesome. So. As far as how the game starts out, you start out with a certain amount of mana. The player that goes first starts out with two mana, and the player that goes second starts out with three. So there's three mana tiles in the very beginning, and uh, when they're just mana springs, like there's nothing there, that they don't have an effect. In the very beginning, you'll see that they have orbs, and if you pick them up, you'll gain one mana, but it only lasts until the end of the turn. And what that does, though, in the game, it's really, it's really awesome the way that they set it up. Because the player on the left always goes first, and he starts out with two. The player on the right starts out with three. But this one is closer. It allows the game to be more balanced, and also it lets the game technically start at a good starting point. Because if you don't have that, you can have people that summon blast and range units in the back. And if they, you know, go for that strategy, then they can uh, be technically at a disadvantage. So over here, the game was just over. But um, let me go ahead and show you guys some of the cards and talk about the interesting things in this game. So I'll, I'll go ahead and show you guys my... Oh, actually, if you first start out the game, um, uh, you'll see that there's Practice, Season Ladder, Solo Challenge, and the Gauntlet. So this is Draft. This is Solo. It's it's like puzzles. I think a lot of you guys will like this. It's literally... Um, if you look at the puzzles, I haven't completed all of them, but the puzzles are like, uh, defeat this person in one turn. So basically, you're your OT King. It's literally like a Yu-Gi-Oh puzzle. You guys will love that. Um, obviously, they probably will add more of these in the future. I'm thinking they'll probably add more of these challenges. This is primarily a multiplayer game, though, and I think it should be. Otherwise, playing against the AI, is, to me, it's not the most fun. When you guys first start out, though, you'll have um, no decks, but you'll be able to, to get you'll get all uh, all six decks in the very beginning, and then you'll unlock other cards by playing. But before you guys go, oh, is this a pay-to-win game? Don't worry about that because. Uh, what's really cool, let me go and show you the uh, collection and how it works. Oh wait, hold on, let me show you the um, the orb. So, I don't have enough gold to buy one, otherwise I'd buy a pack. Uh, I will be uploading a bunch of uh, spirit orb openings. So, uh, basically they're 100 gold, you pay real money, but if you're not interested in doing that, don't worry. It's not going to be a super pay to win game. You'll have to play a little bit, uh, just as a heads up. And by a little bit, I mean a lot, but the game's awesome, so don't worry about that. So um, you, you open it up and you just get cards. It's, it's nothing that's like super game breaking that I need to explain to you. But there is rarity in it, but we'll go over that when we go ahead and check out the collection. So, um, oh, also one important thing. When you first start out the game, you'll get daily quests. Make sure you complete the daily quests. Um, like I have this one up right now that's a Magmar challenge. There's also a first win of the day. You get like at least one pack a day. It depends how much you play, but if you just log in and play a few matches, um, and you complete like a quest and you get your first daily you and then you do a few of like the if you are just starting out You do a few of the like uh, quests you you'll have you'll have enough to buy a pack a day pretty much at least and uh, That if you play a lot obviously you can get more packs But what I really like with this and this is something that I wish Card games would offer and this is something awesome. So like I said, you will have to unlock everything um, you, you guys know since I like competitive, I wish that it was like, like a competitive mode had everything unlocked and you literally got to play with the best decks. That would be awesome. Uh, maybe perhaps in the future they, that could be something that they would offer. But um, I'm sure if they ever make it to esports, obviously they're not going to make you like uh, have like you know limited card resources or uh, they'll, they'll probably give you access to all cards. I hope this game makes it esports because it's a blast to watch and play. But um, so like I said, there's uh, multiple factions. There's six factions as of right now. I'm sure if the game gets popular, uh, they will add more factions later down the line. Um, I'm going to briefly give you guys a description of what I feel like the uh, different races or factions, classes, whatever you want to call them, 
I'll give you guys like a brief introduction to how they kind of play. So, um, there's Lionar, Songhai, Vitruvian, Abyssian, Magmar, Vanar, and Neutral. So neutral means that you can run it in any deck. Uh, you have to you have to select which faction that you want though. So pick a faction. Like I said, you'll get all six decks in the very beginning of the game, so you'll have access to choose whatever you want to play. Um, but I'll give you guys a brief description, so this way when you guys are first starting out, um, I also will be doing like uh, I would guess beginner like deck profile, so you, you guys can get like a better understanding not only of the game, but you guys can also get a better understanding of like what they do. So. Uh, we'll do that in like uh, future videos, but uh, I'm gonna give you guys like a brief rundown of what like I feel like the the, the classes do. So, Lionar. Um, oh, by the way, there's multiple generals for each one. Sorry, getting thirsty. But um, there's multiple uh, um, like I said uh, generals. So you, you have to pick a general to start out when you're making a deck. So um, this one's special ability is give a minion uh, nearby your general plus two attack. Um, then the other effect of the other general is to restore three health to a friendly minion. So at that point, you can decide what you want. Do you want to heal? There is, like, you'd think that this is just for healing. But the thing is, there are a lot of cards where it says if you heal, you get to deal damage. So there's, like, a double effect. So it's kind of, you know, it's not everything is, like, as clear-cut as it looks because there's different ways that you can play. So Lionar, they generally have what's called... A lot of their monsters have what's called zeal. Let me go ahead and mouse over a, a thing that has zeal. Oh, this, uh, this one over here. So it gains bonus effect when nearby your general. So it, it explains everything perfectly. One thing that, you know, uh, a lot of card games have, it, it gets too complicated. You know, you get missing the timing, damage step. You know, all of these complex effects, they're, they're all very simplified in this. Like, the game is complex. Like, there's a lot of depth to the game. But you won't get confused about most things in the game. They explain things very well. Like, like I said, Zeal gains a uh, bonus effect when you write journal. Zeal gains two attack. So if it's basically in the vicinity, uh, which you can, when you mouse over your general, it'll, it'll basically explain it when you're um, uh, playing the game. You'll be able to see the squares. So um, it's going to gain plus two attack. So the way that Lionar likes to play, um, wh whatever general you want, they want to kind of stick together because it restores uh, health to a friendly minion. So a lot of the stuff works off of zeal and you want to actually use a lot of that there's a lot of different cards for each faction and if you're playing a lion R deck um you're not going to be able to play any of the song or vitruvian cards you only can play lion R and neutral uh, but that is i like that the structure that way because this way when you go into a game you know a little bit of what to expect in the game you, you expect to know their strategy if you get interested in going on the ladder and playing competitively, that's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to know the basic rundown. So these guys, they are just rushers and beaters, and they want to all stick in a ball. But that can be a downside because there are other things that do AoE damage. Um, so basically, Lionar are like basic. It, they're, they're very, I would say they're simple um, to get a good grasp of the game and understand. And... Um, they're good for beginners simply because a lot of the things you won't have to think ahead of moves uh, too much. Because obviously, like if anyone's playing any game, you're gonna have to think ahead when it's a card game, and you're gonna have to anticipate certain cards from certain decks. But what's awesome with this is like it's very clear cut uh, as far as like what the deck does, and it doesn't get too complex. Like you have to destroy this minion to proc this effect. That next turn you're gonna do this. It's n it's a little bit more simple. Like I said, there are situations where you will be. Uh, granted the situation that you're gonna have to be aware of what's gonna happen next turn But for the most part these guys want to rush down and beat you can equip You can run that you can make this an equip deck and just equip a bunch of cards to your general and just beat things down um, Like for example, there is uh, there's a legendary armor that I really like um, It's called the regalia. So every time um, you attack You're gonna be able to gain two extra attack and the first time you take damage. It's gonna prevent two damage So this is an equip card um, Equip cards in this game how they work is they last three, uh, they last, it's not three turns, it's, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. Basically, your general can take damage three times before the uh, equip is destroyed. So uh, this one says you're preventing damage, you're not going to be uh, getting destroyed. That's why that thing is so good. But um, yeah, these guys, that's the basic concept is they're warriors, they, they're, most of them are melee. Um, and actually, I don't think there's any range in this. Um, uh, yeah, these have Frenzy Provoke. Okay, so yeah, these don't have, uh, none of these in the Lionar, to my knowledge. Oh, let me double check on that. Yeah, none of them actually have range. 
Um, but yeah, they're, they're like just warriors. Uh, the Songhai, they, they are assassins, but there's also another general that you have access to. Um, I need to put a new deck. Oh, I don't have that one unlocked yet, because I've been pretty much just playing um, Abyssian and Lionar right now. I'm going to make decks for everything though, guys, don't worry. But um, there is another general that you unlock. Her ability is to summon a small minion that has ranged. But uh, Kalios has the ability to teleport, so you can teleport and backstab, that's kind of their goal. Or you can activate a bunch of spell cards. These are, this deck is a little bit complicated, so uh, I can't really recommend you guys this play early on. But if you want to, feel free to go ahead and try it out. Um, they need to, to be effective with them, you have to know how to get behind your enemy and uh, backstab. And sometimes if you play against a good player, they'll just position themselves where you can't backstab them. And that's obviously what you need to, you know, teleport. And that's why you need to do those uh, certain things to get around that. The uh, Vitruvians, they like to special summon a bunch of like, they're called um, wind dervishes. So they they get to spawn, every time you have an obelisk, they just keep on spawning over and over. Uh, but at the end, end phase, they're all destroyed. So that's kind of how they play, that's like the gist of it. Um, there's another general that makes it so you deal double damage to enemy minions. Not the general, but just you just get to do double damage to um, the minions so there's there's minions and there's generals there's only two types of like things that you have to worry about as far as monsters and there's uh, spells and there's artifacts artifacts are equips that you equip to your general uh so there's certain effects um that i guess i can kind of go over so blast it just uh, attack all enemies and generals in one straight line so it just shoots one straight like beam and um, oh also this game has um um cooldown on when when you summon a monster it can't attack immediately unless it has what's called rush so yeah, keep that in mind as well. Um, Asbisians, this is, to me, this is the coolest one. This is the one that it, you summon monsters, you destroy your stuff, you sacrifice your monsters to proc other effects. Um, I, like I said, I will be uploading gameplays of like all of these different uh, classes and stuff. But uh, one really awesome play over here um, is having things that have what's called Death Watch. Uh, so this this is, here's the effect, it's, it's Shadow Dancer. So Death Watch, Deal one damage to the enemy general and restore one health to your general. So every time anything dies, it doesn't matter yours or theirs, you get to deal damage to the enemy general and you get to restore your HP. Now, um, there's a card called um, Blood Moon Priestess. So en when anything uh, dies, um, with the exception of herself, um, you get to summon one Wraith thing nearby on a random space. So what you can do is you can keep on summoning free things. And by the way, Wraith thing's death triggers death watch because it's death watch. Anything dies, it's going to spawn another one. And uh, like I said, I will upload gameplay of this. I already have like tons of gameplay of this. This was my deck for a while, which was death watch uh, Abyssian. So basically you just keep on like you, you get to swarm really trash monsters and you get to destroy them. Um, and you just just ram monsters in for days. Um, now, th it's not like it's going to be OP because every deck has an out to it. For example, if you have a bunch of 1-1s, someone like, let's say Lionar, I have, I have a really great ability. Um, it's uh, called Decimate, so it destroys all minions that are not nearby a general. So if you're not nearby a general and then there's like too many monsters, it's just going to wipe the board. Um, but you might think, oh, that's kind of un unbalanced. But the thing is, you'll have to look at what you're playing against and uh, act accordingly to that specific one. But yeah, Abyssians, they're all about like death, basically. And um, there's also another win condition that they have technically, uh, which is Shadow Nova. So um, there's what's called Creep. Uh, I'll upload some gameplay of it, actually. It'd be much better just to see the actual gameplay of that. Um, then Magmar, um, they are all about like just buffing themselves up to, well, the, the, uh, Vath can buff himself up to crazy amounts. The other general just lets both players draw one card. Um, it's 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 more oriented around combo things, so I wouldn't really recommend um, playing Magmar. Oh, Abyssian, it, it could be, I could consider, like, the, the, the skill cap for this deck is very, very high, but it, it could be a very good beginner deck because when you see how strong they, this deck can be, you'll love this deck. I, I think Lionar and Abyssian are great beginner decks, just because of the way that, uh, like, Abyssian's much more fun than Lionar. Lionar, to me at least, it, it's kind of a rush beatdown deck, but it's it's very good uh, when you have, like, the armor, and it, it can get pretty nasty really fast. Uh, it's a relatively faster deck. Uh, Abyssian takes a while, kind of, to get it rolling, uh, for the most part. Magmar, 
Um, you can buff up yourself to crazy amounts or you can draw a lot of cards. And some of their cards have rebirth, so when it dies it leaves an egg and then if, if your opponent doesn't kill the egg, it's just going to respawn. So keep that in mind as well if you're playing against them. Uh, the Vanar, they have a lot of freezing, they have a lot of stuns, they have a lot of turn this into this. Um, I think this is more of a control deck and uh, I think her name's Faye. Her special ability is that she deals 2 damage to all enemies in the enemy's uh, general's column. So anywhere straight up and down. So blast is left and right um, and up and down. And then um, this ability in the uh, column is just basically up and down. And um, that's her ability. Um, yeah, like I said, it's it's more. I think I think if you guys like control, Abyssian can be good and Venar can be good. And then with neutral, you can run this in anything. I don't think you can really make a neutral deck. Um, oh, one thing that I think a lot of you guys will be hyped for. There is basically an Exodia in this game. So, uh, Exodia, uh, here's my, like, Exodia deck right here. So, Exodia is a deck where it, it summons a, uh, Mechazor. The Mechazor has what's called, um, Airdrop, it has Frenzy, and it has Range. So, when you have all the pieces, it summons an 8-8 anywhere on the map, and it, and it shoots, uh, anywhere on the map it's it it almost is an automatic win it's a huge huge like boost in the game and what happens is you just have to summon uh five of the mechazors because each one of them says the opening gambit opening gambit is when this card is summoned i, I think it should just say when this card is played it, it would make it much more simple but opening gambit is when this card first gets played um, you get to uh, get 20%. So you summon five of them. They can die. It doesn't matter uh, you know, where they go. It doesn't matter if they get brain controlled, uh, which there, there's things that steal other cards in this game. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to just uh, make that progress. Um, like I said, once you summon five, you'll get a huge beast monster. The, the card isn't like, you can't see the card because it's only like when you play. Uh, I haven't seen very many people pull it off. I had, I had all five pieces turn one in a game. Again, I'll upload all of these later uh, down the line. But um, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in our introduction to the game. But um, try the game out, guys. I'll leave a link down below in the description. This game is it's, it's awesome. Like, if you like card games, this is going to be a blast for you. But anyways, I'll leave a link down below in the description. You guys, check it out if you want to. Uh, like I said, I'll be uploading a ton of videos on Duelist. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'm signing out.